Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Hill. What's going on, guys? Today we're talking about the first five episodes of Amazon's Batman Cape Crusader. Todd, for those who may not know, what is Batman Cape Crusader? So as you mentioned, this is the new Batman series, animated series, that has debuted on Amazon Prime this past week. Uh, Ten episode first uh, season. We've watched the first five. Uh, basically, this is uh, has a very, uh, I would say, late 1930s, early 1940s setting. Uh, everything in buildings, vehicles, tech of the time. You could even had call it tech back then. Yeah. Uh, it's very much, there's a kind of a, not really an overarching connection to each episode, but they are kind of along the same line. It's kind of Batman in the early days of his career with like the villain of the week or villain of the episode. Yeah, I think that's a pretty fair description. It is, it is much more villain of the week than it is one continuous story. Right. Or, like, there's a little bit of a through line, but yeah. So, uh, just something I, I wrote up here, Todd. So, in the first five episodes, Batman takes on a gender swap penguin, yep. a new version of Clayface, a broke Catwoman, forgotten villain Firebug, and a race-swapped Harley Quinn. Additionally, Batman and Bruce Wayne also encounters race swap versions of Jim and Barbara Gordon, Crooked Cops, Arnold Flass, and Harvey Bullock, Lawyer Lucius Fox, Good Cop Renee Montoya, a scummy Harvey Dent, and of course, Fat Alfred. <laughs> now, uh, here's our little, uh, we'll put it up on the screen, Tal Capes Don't Discriminate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've specifically highlighted the characters here that have been race and gender swap because uh, there will always be those who will automatically hate this show because of DEI and it's right. perceived wokeness, Todd. So any criticism you may hear from us today is based on the quality of the show, nothing more. Gotcha. Nothing less. So uh, with that said, Todd, what did you think of the first five episodes of Cape Crusader? Uh, first five, I would say, were fairly decent. Uh, you know, it's kind of not actually what I thought it was going to be conceptually. I kind of thought as the, maybe the early days of Batman's career, maybe more of him just taking on maybe – crime and corruption in and around Gotham City. A year more, one type. Uh, yeah, more mob, more corruption in the police force. Uh, maybe some of those early, early Batman villains, like an early Hugo Strange. I think it was one back in the day called the Mad Monk. Mm. Uh, Batman, I think he took on like a vampire or two back in the day. Right. <laughs> and I've read some things that maybe there's some more supernatural stuff coming on down the line. But uh, for what it was, it was pretty decent. But, you know... Got room to improve in my eyes, but pretty decent first five. Um, for the first five, um, I, what I will say is I don't like it. Okay, <laughs> don't like it at all. Okay, I do not like it at all. From that first episode, it has nothing to do with gender swap penguin, which we'll talk about. But um, um, it's not. There's nothing about it. Like I've been trying to like sit and kind of think about it, and like I heard. Um, you know, when we when we do this, I don't like to go on and like, especially before we record something, I don't like to go and read about what other people's opinions are right, rather or reviews. how it's doing. The only right. thing I looked at before um, we originally started, we because we're a week behind on recording this or a few days behind, I should say, um, I did look at a little bit more than I usually would. Uh, mostly the big thing I looked at was just like a couple of like, I went through some YouTube thumbnails and I didn't see a lot of like, oh, this sucks or this is woke or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And I looked at the Rotten Tomatoes very early on and it was like 100%. And then I sit down and I was like, okay, well, I'm excited. Let me sit down and watch episode one. Mm -hmm. And immediately after episode one, I'm like, I, what the fuck is this? I was completely <laughs> right. deflated because like, I don't know. I don't know what my expectations were. Like I knew the setting. I knew what it was going to be. But I feel like the you know, we'll, we'll going to talk about it more and we'll get your thoughts on it stuff. But like, I feel like there's, it feels so average. It feels so gotcha. mediocre to me. Like there, the animation, I don't think is anything special. Yeah. I think it feels cheap in a way. Yeah. Like it, it maybe not, it, maybe cheap is the wrong term, but it feel, it, it, it feels uninspired. How about that? Okay. It feels basic. It feels cookie cutter. Yeah. Now, maybe that's the point, but still, if it is, it it doesn't serve the, the, the story for me. Mm -hmm. Like, there was that um, 
they that Bruce Tim did that like short film that was kind of like a short little Batman thing that was kind of like this. You remember? I forget what the name of it was called. Like the one that was in black and white. Yeah, Strange Days. Strange, like yeah, was. something like that. That mm-hmm. like had it had atmosphere and it was moody. That's kind of what I thought we were getting here. Yeah, honestly. like I thought it was going to be a very kind of atmospheric, kind of pulpy 1930s, mm-hmm. 40s serial, and it's like. It tries to be that, but it's not. And there's nothing. And, like, I looked at some of these people talking about it, and they're like, oh, this is, like, the spiritual successor to the Batman animated series. This is the best Batman show since the animated series. I'm like, this doesn't even this doesn't even get in the same fucking room as the animated series, <laughs> my guy. Right. This is not a spiritual successor to that at all. This This comes nowhere near that level. Like, the animation, you can go back and watch – the 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 creativity and the talent and the writing and the animation the art that was done with that show in 1990s and 1992 is leaps and bounds better than this shit. Right. This is so <laughs> basic like going back and watching some of those like Batman the animated series show and like I saw a couple people talk about it but then like show some footage from the animated series and then try to like say the Cape Crusaders is good. And I'm like, we're watching two different things, my guy. Right, right. Like, I don't understand what this, I don't like any comparison that this has to the animated series is purely to me just because Bruce Timm's name is on it. Yeah. That's it. And that's the only thing to me that it shares in common with Batman the animated series is because Bruce Timm's name on it and he has his own little style and everything. And like, for the most part, I'm good with it. I mean, he's made some fantastic shows. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the animated series, Superman, Justice, Justice League, Justice League Young Limited. Love them all. This, I do not like. I do not. I, I think it's very basic. And, like, voice acting, some good, some some bad, some cringe. Um, animation, like I said, there's nothing. I sit down and watch these five episodes, and there's five more to go, and we're going to try to cover those next week. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, there's not a damn one part that's memorable to me. Right. There's not one episode. Is there one episode that you would go back and watch again for any reason? Honestly, I don't think so. Like, like I mean, like my, I think my highlight episode would be the Catwoman episode. Right. That's episode three. But I don't think I could, I, wanna re, I don't think I could rewatch it right now anyway. Yeah. I mean, like, go back and watch On Leather Wings. Right. The, the atmosphere. Robin's and the, Reckoning. <laughs> yeah, and the mood and, mm-hmm. like, the storytelling. And we'll get into, like, who this is for and who it's not for maybe. But, like, those are timeless. And, like, I'm, I don't – nothing is ever going to come close to that. Like, I'm sorry. There's there's not going to be another animated show ever that is going to come close to the animated series. Right. Because it was it was of its time but ahead of its time. And it's and there was so much creativity and so much done differently with that show than anything else we've ever gotten before. So, like, you know, it, something like this show could might – it could touch maybe – in its best day, if it was good, it could touch, like, the new Batman Adventures or something. Right. You know, when it went to the different style mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and it was yeah. more – Modernish, and it wasn't like drawn on black paper and stuff like the the, yeah. the very best sixty three yeah. episodes of Batman animated mm-hmm. series. When it went to that new style, if this were good, I could say it could touch those yeah. those episodes, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, right. let, let, let let me get to your thoughts on some stuff. Like, what do you, what do you think about? Like, because I, again, I don't. I think it's very basic looking and stuff. Like, what do you think about? the design of the characters and the animation style that you get here. It is a little bit different. Uh, it's it kind of has a little bit of that Bruce Tim style, but like you say, it's kind of more cookie cutter, maybe more modernized. I do like the look of Batman. I do like, you know, the shorter gloves, the longer ears. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, you know, uh, first appearance to the early 40s Batman. Right. Uh, I like that. Uh, you know, I think you, we kind of mentioned, yeah, I wish there was more Batman in it. That's there's, a problem, there's too. A, there's hardly any Batman in this animated series. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a problem with it, too. There's not a lot mm-hmm. of Batman. Like, he seems to be a, a side character in his own show, which is fine if your supporting cast was that interesting. Tell me who's interesting to you outside of Batman in this show, Todd. I mean, honestly, there, there's not a standout. There really isn't. In the first five, at least. Maybe that changes. Yeah, maybe maybe somebody up. gets developed. But, yeah. like, you know, I like, you know, we get um, our race swapped, Commissioner Gordon and Barbara Gordon. Right. I liked it, the fact that they made her an attorney. 
like a public defender. Yeah. I think that kind of fits her. Mm-hmm. Like she's kind of always idealistic and kind of go get her. Like that's better than her just being like a college student and stuff, which is mostly how she's depicted in the early animated series and stuff, or like through various stuff, or being like an oracle or being actually Batgirl. Right. Like I, I think her being a public defender and being in that realm, I think could provide some good storytelling I get in a better show. Um, but like I I like that fact. Commissioner Gordon, he just he's there. Um, I like some of the stuff they do with some of the with like Flash and Bullock in one episode. Like, some of that stuff is yeah. I do the like Firebug episode yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. Um what do you think about them swapping Harvey Bullock to a bad guy? He's traditionally animated series, Harvey Bullock. He's kind of bumbling and stuff yeah. and, like, not that great at his job, but he was a good guy. He was still a good guy. He was a little bit of a hard-nosed cop, but he yeah. was still a good guy. What do you think about the switch? I mean, it kind of works here in the context of this series, so we'll see. Um, voice acting I mentioned, too, it's hit and miss for me. Um, overall, like, I'm with you. I like the design of Batman. Obviously, he's the strongest design here. I like the that early, you know, um, you know, Inception origin Batman look, you know, that classic kind of Bill Finger mm-hmm. Batman look that we get here. That That's fine. He's obviously, you know, you would hope Batman is the best design character, and he is in his show. Um, voice acting, though, we get uh, Hamish Link later. He's Batman Bruce Wayne this time around. Uh, what do you think about him and the job he does as Batman Bruce Wayne here? So far, I don't have any real issues with him. I think I've seen a lot of people comment, and he's kind of trying to maybe do a little bit of a Conroy and a little bit of his own thing. Yeah. I mean, it kind of works somewhat. You know, it's just it's hard to do another guy, another guy do this voice besides Kevin Conroy. Yeah. But I think the guy's doing a pretty decent job. Yeah, and I mean, there's some other voice talent. Christina Ricci, she's in it. She's a Catwoman, right? Okay. Um, who else we got? Diedrich Bader, he's as Harvey Dent. I think Harvey. Com- I think completely miscast as Harvey Dent. Yeah, that's a little. Yeah, especially I've I've kind of like seen some like clips from uh, f- like future episodes, and it seems like he doesn't really vary the voice too much. I could be wrong, but like I like that like dichotomy that you have between like the way Harvey speaks to like more of a gruff two face, right? And it doesn't seem like he's doing that. He's just Diedrich Bader the whole way through. Yeah, sounds like he's just getting a paycheck out of it, <laughs> which I think is what this show he is is just is like just a lot of people getting a paycheck. Um, but yeah, the voice the voice cast is kind of hit and miss all the way through for me. The music I didn't think was anything special. Not really. There was no like good triumphant theme. There was no nothing strong there. There was a couple like pulpy little like you know thirties esque like when you get into that like episode two like with Clayface you get a little like kind of maybe classic Hollywood esque kind of stuff like you know what I mean like old you know pulpy horror films like the twenties and the thirties type Mm -hmm. type music but like by episode two I hardly remember anything about episode two because I was so shocked of how much I hated episode (laughs) one. I really was like I didn't absorb any of episode two because I'm like what did I watch? Mm -hmm. Um a big thing for episode one it's been talked about and I'm sure you'll see it in like some of these channels that may eventually pop up and say this is like too woke and it's too whatever. Uh, we do get gender swap penguin. Oswald Cobblepot is now Oswalda Cobblepot. She is still basically it's really the only thing different is that she has a vagina. Because <laughs> right. I mean because like she's still the penguin in look. She's mm-hmm. still running the iceberg lounge. Only thing is different is she has a vagina that's birthed to Two did, sons. Two diddling sons. Mm-hmm. Like that just like the two, you know, moronic sons. Yeah. Uh I guess one difference is, is she fancies herself kind of like a lounge singer. Yeah, she has she, like a little uh she's proprietor yeah. of the iceberg lounge, but also and like the singer and the and the talent and the star of it. She's like uh Nathan Lane in the birdcage. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. What did you think of the uh Oswalda Cobblepot and her sons? Oh, how do I how do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> Just be honest. I'll flash the message. Okay. <laughs> we, the whole time you're speaking, we don't discriminate. It was a little it was a little uh, weird for me. Right. I mean, here's here's my thing. I think if you're going to take a Batman villain and you're going to gender swap them, why would you pick one of the uh, shortest, fattest, and ugliest Batman villains you have? And like, hey, that's the one we're going to make a woman. Yeah. And have her still basically aesthetically look the same. She's still got the big old long pointy nose. She's still a little hefty. She's just, you know, a female now. Right. I mean, nothing she says, nothing she, she does is off-putting. You know, it's just... I don't understand why they felt the need to do that. 
Now, if that makes me wrong, I'll be the first one to say I'm wrong. It doesn't. It just felt a little bit like a bridge too far. The thing about it, too, is like traditionally the penguin, part of his character and the way he's depicted in a lot of media is being an outcast, is being that physical oddity and Mm -hmm. that deformity a little bit of his character, which has kind of informed who his character is, and it's kind of played up in his male counterparts through Batman media. I was kind of hoping to see that a little bit, like maybe people like in Gotham are like a little, they turn down their nose to her, so to speak, because like she's this ugly broad. It looks like a penguin. Yeah. And that's part of her motivation or something. Mm-hmm. And give, play that up a little bit. You get none of that. Um, and then the thing about it, I'm really, and I, I was the person I was talking to made this point um, about how played out that trope of like, confident mother with two bumbling sons he is yeah <laughs> that trope is played out right and that's what you get here and it's completely played out but my biggest problem with it when it, especially when you do all these gender swaps and everything else is for what purpose are you doing it and then there's nothing that you could look at for this character that says why would you do this other than because you could do it right there's nothing that you do with it that makes it interesting or brings anything to the character with her being a woman um so at the end of the day i say what's the point if you wrote it and maybe give it again like i said maybe something to do with like her physical appearance does play into it more because she's a woman and she's looked down on and it's Mm -hmm. harder for her not only being a woman in gotham and running this iceberg lounge but then maybe that's part of what turned her to crime or whatever because like Maybe people were coming away because, like, I don't want to go see this ugly broad singing in this bar or whatever. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Then maybe she could become a mob boss because of that. And right. You inform the character with it. But, like, here you get nothing. She's just a woman f- to be a woman and just, gotcha. I guess, to be different or maybe to, so, to check a box. I don't know of DEI. I don't know. But my thing about it is I don't really care the reason for it except does it make sense narratively to swap a traditionally male character to female what is the reason that you're doing it? And there's no no one can tell me a reason that they did it. Yeah. Like if Bruce Tim was sitting right there, I mean, I have a lot of questions for him based on this shit. <laughs> right. But I'd be like, tell me the reason. Give yeah. me one good reason why she had to be Oswald other than just because you could. Yeah, and it's not like the Batman universe is uh, thin on strong female strong characters. Enough, exactly. It's strong with strong female characters. Exactly. You got Harley Quinn, you got Catwoman. Poison you Ivy, Poison Red Ivy. Claw. Yeah. Like, like there's a lot of good female characters in the Batman mythos Talia al Ghul Talia like al-Ghul. I mean there's a lot of like that you can point back to and you can borrow others from DC that's not specifically Batman why is her name escaping me right now the cop that's kind of put in charge of the task force Renee Montoya Montoya yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean like there's a lot of good characters that are that are classically female that you could actually add some stuff to and rework and redesign them and fit them into the 1930s aesthetic here instead of you know, uh, just repurposing a traditionally male character for whatever purposes. But again, that's that's my point about it. Is like it's just doing it just to do it. Yeah. And a lot of these changes are just doing it just to do it. Um, part of my problem with that episode too is that um, there's it's the 1930s and 40s, and I guess like part of me kind of wants wanted to see a more like. I don't know, kind of like a Gotham by Gaslight situation in terms of, like, the tech be very basic. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, just grappling hooks and some smoke bombs and that's yeah. like, and some Tommy guns, and that was about it. Right. But, like, we it does live in that weird world of, like, it's old, old-looking but with some high, higher tech stuff. Um, at one point, uh, Penguin has a military-grade cannon. On top of a boat. On top of a boat. That's on top of the sketchy. iceberg lounge, basically. <laughs> That's the premise of the whole episode is, like, she she's bombing out, like, she's b- trying to bomb out businesses and bomb out the other mom mm-hmm. bosses, like Rupert Thorne and Rupert things Thorne, like that. Yeah. Batman has a sub. Yeah. A sub- it's a 1930s submarine. Even the Batmobile looks kind of more high-tech than all the other vehicles you see in the series, it'd be yeah. nice if it was like an old an old roadster or something. <laughs> yeah, like if it had that 1940s vibe yeah. with the big battering ram and stuff, mm-hmm. and it was just a souped-up muscle car like yeah. like you'd get with, like, people running booze back in the 40s right. and the 20s and stuff and running moonshine. Like, you know, it was just yeah. a souped-up hot rod. Like, that to me, and you can still have the weird some weird stuff in it too, but, like, I don't know, it just felt a little at odds to me, but I can forgive that. That's nowhere near my most major complaint is about right. the tech and stuff. But um, uh, for episode two, what did you think about 
the new Clayface. It's kind of re. It's a new look, I guess, for Clayface. Like he's still Basil Carlo in this version. Like a you know kind of. F- actor, failed actor, something like that. What did you think about that episode and like the new clay face design? Probably my other, I guess my second favorite episode after the Catwoman episode would be this one. I kind of like this one. Mm. I like two and I like three. The others are kind of kind of decent to mediocre to me. Right. What did you think about like... Um, I thought the look was pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think the look was the pretty cool. The aesthetic of it was nice. And I liked it. It was like an old... He was like an old 1930s actor, and he had like a makeup artist. Right. And I saw somebody kind of draw the comparison that like he was like Basil Carlo, and that guy that was his like his makeup artist was kind of like you know Boris Karloff, and the guy that did the Frankenstein makeup, makeup back from, in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, like, and when you can play up that stuff, like I did find again, I kind of zoned out a little bit for two, but I did like that aspect of it, and like when you can pull stuff like that in, that it's, it's a little bit cooler because like. You know, that's kind of what I was hoping for with some of, like, the more pulpy stuff in this setting. Like, you could do stuff like that. But then, too, like, when people were like, well, look, you like that and stuff. And, like, I would say go watch that episode of, like, if you, like, again, memorable. All right, one-time viewing, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, it turns into this whole, like, damsel rescue and all this kind of stuff at the end. But, like... Watch that, and then go watch, like, the animation of, like, that the first, like, uh, what is it? Is it Feet of Clay? Was that the first time Clayface featured or Face of Clay? Whatever the first mm-hmm. introduction on the on, on TAS was, and there's that, that ending scene where he's, like, transforming in all them characters, and it looks, like, amazing. Mm. Then go watch this show. And right. tell me that they're in the same fucking universe, Todd. Right. Tell me that they're, you. you know I what you. I mean? Like You ain't got to convince me. I know, right? I know, I'm telling you. I'm talking to, I'm talking to you folks. <laughs> you, the people that are, and, and one thing it did kind of make me happy, too, and, I'm like, it's it's sad that it makes me happy because I want Batman properties to succeed and shows to succeed, but I did look back at the Rotten Tomatoes just before we started. It has gone down to a 97%, but now the audience score is in. The audience score is a 61%. That's pretty so maybe there there a big difference. Yeah, I think there may be some more people on the audience side that are kind of coming over to my way of thinking to it is this is not as great as some people are making it out to be. And I don't know if they got that Amazon check or what it was. Right, but right. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you a part. There's a part at one point I think uh, Bruce is like on a boat or something. At a, I think he's at a museum. I think it's the, the, the episode three with Catwoman. Okay. And he's at that museum, and, like, he's got his mother's pearls on display. And that reporter makes that crack about, well, how would you be so stupid to go down an alley in Gotham? Probably and the he, coolest thing and in he any decks, of them episodes. And he decks him. I was <laughs> going to ask you how you felt about that. Like, do you think that Bruce would punch him or not? I was kind of like. maybe that was a little bit of a bridge too far. I, I kind of debated. Giving a little bit too much away. Well, I kind of debated. I'm like, you know, would, you know, because I always see, th- th- this is early Bruce. But, like, I just kind of. Felt like maybe, you know, maybe it was a little air of character, but I just want to see what you thought. Like, would he, would he deck him? Because this Bruce kind of, especially the way he talks to Dr. Quinzel at that little meeting he has to have with her for decking that guy. Mm. You can tell this version of Bruce has got that kind of aloof playboy, I don't give a shit attitude already. Right. He knows how to separate, you know, the two sides. Mm-hmm. So it might be a little bit out of character for this version to have decked that guy. So, yeah, like I was kind of thinking if he was more like the Robert Pattinson, more withdrawn and weird and mm-hmm. like... Then, like, again, you use this 10 episodes to kind of evolve him. That maybe even make it a pot line with him and Alfred to say, like, you have to separate Batman and Bruce Wayne a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't go around decking guys for talking about your mama. Right, Like, you have to be aloof and above it and act like you don't give a shit. And, like, so people cannot assume that you're Batman. Um, So I I kind of thought it was a little out of character for that. But, yeah, like, I just – I kind of want to get your take on it. I just thought it was a little bit – weird yeah that he would kind of crack the guy like i think it's a good moment but i thought it was a little weird of like you want to just kind of play it down when you bruce yeah. wayne you don't want to draw attention to draw yourself, attention to yourself. As, until you do some kind of big grand gesture and be like oh, i'm giving away a hospital or right. whatever you know what i mean <laughs> and be like philanthropist bruce yeah. wayne or whatever yeah. but i just want to kind of get your take on it uh, I know you said episode three is your favorite, probably. I think episode four was my favorite, the Firebug episode. That was pretty strong, too. We'll talk about in a second. Uh, well, something I wanted to, a couple things I wanted to mention from the Catwoman episode. Uh, we get Selena's comically drawn and comically Eastern European made Greta. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about that? <laughs> She's just there for laughs. Like, it's it's really, got to be. It's really just something mm-hmm. to set up for yucks and yeah. shits and giggles. 
because like she's very comically drawn and she's just so comically Eastern European and like <laughs> that whole episode felt a little funky to me. It mm-hmm. was it felt like it was the one that was definitely tried to be more playful. Yeah. In a way, because you get Catwoman, it's like she's just you know, kind of vamping off of Batman, just like, oh, he's got a costume, I'll get a costume. He's got a car, I'll get a and car. And we see the Catmobile, yeah. something I did not know existed until, like, I was <laughs> right. like, is this a real thing from the comics? And it was. <laughs> what did you think of the Catmobile, Todd? Uh, it was, it was is that, okay. Is that what you call your truck? The Catmobile, <laughs> no. if you know what I mean? No, it's just my truck. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just my truck. <laughs> okay. What do you think of the Catmobile? It was all right. I mean, it was... Decent enough design, I guess. Yeah. What was it that you liked uh, so much about three that it made it kind of stand out to you? I don't know. Maybe it was just I've always liked that look, that costume for Catwoman. I mean, it was just maybe it was just the look of Catwoman. I don't know. Right. The kind of baggy kind of dress kind yeah, of look with, or with whatever. Kind of the green cape and right. that little slit dress. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, yeah. I never minded it. I uh, I never minded that one at all. And um, it was more of a playful type episode. You know? Yeah, it definitely was more levity, I think, yeah. than, than the rest of the episodes that we've seen. It was definitely more playful, more like, uh, you know, pun intended, like cat and mouse kind of, you mm. know what I mean, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, f- episode four was my favorite because, like, it was more, it felt more street level. Mm. And for the most part, it felt more, um, it felt like it had, like, a plot, a more cohesive plot. It was like, basically, it starts out too, because I like part of it is like, basically, Renee Montoya, uh, she's one of the few people Gordon knows he can trust, because Gordon's still here, still the good cop, still one of the only good cops left mm-hmm. in Gotham. Montoya's a good cop, and he kind of puts her in charge of the Batman task force. Right. And part of her plan is like, we're going to go out in the city and do a bunch of fake crimes and see if we can get Batman to intervene, and then we'll bust him like during the you know the process of the fake crime. Yeah. So I like that, where like Batman's kind of stalking the rooftops and being like, is this real? <laughs> is this real? I just imagine what some hooker getting her head stove in with a bat, and I'm like, ooh, that one was real. <laughs> that wasn't the GCPD. <laughs> My bad. Uh, you know what I mean? Right. But I like the little... Like cat and mouse with Batman doing the fake crimes. Uh, we get Flash, and you know, as we mentioned before, uh, heel turned Bullock. Mm-hmm. So they uh, they uh, they bring in Harleen Quinzel, the GCPD uh, dude, to kind of profile Batman, and she's like, "Oh, he gets brought out by the nut jobs. The nut jobs are what you need to kind of bring him in." So mm-hmm. Flash and Bullock are like, "Hey, who we got in lockup? There's this dude named Firefly that they call him, and he's like, it's." Bug. Yeah. Fire blo- a bug is a, a lesser known Batman villain, I would say. Firefly is who everybody knows. Yeah. Not many people know Firebug. Not many Firebug. So yeah. he's kind of been repurposed here into this kind of like very meek in a way. Not so much meek. He's just very silent. He's very s- small stature, but he's very yeah. kind of silent and very much into his uh, into his flames. Yes. So they go like, hey, we can bust this dude out. Let's take him. Let's take him down here and like let's ride around with him and like let's. Uh, kind of fake a situation, let him, uh, let's fake a flat tire and let's uh, set up a situation where he can kind of bust himself out of the cruiser. Let's put his costume in the back with his, with his tank of uh, kerosene or whatever it is. Yeah. And let's let him just kind of burn down some of this tenement apartment complex building. Let's see if we can draw out the bat. And like that, the whole Batman in like the, uh, going around like the, the, the building that's on fire and stuff, it kind of felt like kind of like year one to me in a way, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, like that kind of like the way it kind of plays out with Batman versus the police and stuff and that, uh, and that kind of storyline. But like, I really just kind of liked overall the plot. It felt more ground level. It felt like a little bit more of a traditional kind of Batman story, um, that you would kind of see. And I love kind of at the end where like Bullock and Flash just kill him. Just shoot him. Yeah. yeah. They just shoot him and he falls out the window mm-hmm. and they like in the paper the next day, it's like, Oh, hero cop. You know, shoots uh, shoots this guy and like, yeah. takes him down, and like they use that against Gordon and the leverage they have against Gordon and like the the commissioner, not the commissioner, but I guess the, the mayor. That whoever, was the mayor, yeah. Whoever's kind of in on it, and you can kind of see that you know he's kind of propping up Bullock and Flash and all this stuff. So like, I, I thought that was my favorite personally. I think it was probably four, and then three would be my second favorite. So like, okay. I just kind of really enjoyed uh, episode four. What did you think of episode five? This is where we get our new redesigned Harley Quinn. 
And the other one, it was a little weird. A little... <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> I was. You got me awake. I know, huh? right? <laughs> you went to sleep over it there. Was a, it was a little weird. A little weird. Like some of the stuff she had those guys locked up in those rooms doing. Little, little, little sus. Yeah, rich dude who uh, who's been kind of infantilized. He's like doing the baby like diaper thing and like all that kind of stuff. And then it was that guy at the very first. It was uh, obviously a reference to King Tut from the old '66 yes. Batman series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even, I don't know about kind that of a little world Maxi Zeus crossing too. into this world. I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I get you. Yeah, I overall I kind of like the Harley because she's less. She's not the traditional like very like jokey, laughy, bubbly Harley. She's she, very cold and calculating. She's de- yeah, she's definitely very cold and calculating. But I felt too the tone of this of what she's doing with those guys kind of felt all flight. Yeah. Some of it felt dark and then some of it also felt too comedic. Like there's one that she's like having her, like her Butler guy Hastings tickle some dude's feet. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. It just felt totally inconsistent. Yeah. Like I didn't mind her redesigned costume. I didn't mind. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't mind her, her state of being and kind of understated and that kind of cold and calculating, but like, it was just a little tonally inconsistent. I kind of wish that episode in my honestly, I think I wish it would have been a little darker. Some of the stuff she was doing mm-hmm. with it, but that that's what we'll talk about in a minute. Like um, who this show is for. But um, what do you think, best villain out of these five? Ooh, best villain out of the five. Let's see. Yeah, these five episodes. Basically, you got episode one. Uh, no. Fem <laughs> Gwen. You've got. Clayface, Clayface, you've got Catwoman, Catwoman you've got Firebug, Firebug and, and Harley. Harley. I think right now, I would probably give it to that Clayface. Okay, I, think I like that Clayface. Okay, I would say just it, it, you know, Firebug was pretty much inconsequential, mostly in his own episode. He just set fire to that apartment building, and got shot out of a window. So I would still kind of say the Harley, just because of some of the potential that she could have. Yeah. In the future, and I, I did kind of like the design and I like mm-hmm. the coldness of her. It was it was a different kind of portrayal of Harley than we'd seen before. Um, here's the question we've been I've been kind of putting in here a little bit, Todd. Who is this show for? Is it for is it for old men like us? Is it for kids? Do you think do you even think kids would would enjoy this? Is it is it trying to be for adults? Is it trying to be for kids? Is it trying to be somewhere in the middle? Like who who is this for? I don't think it's for it's definitely old guys like me, and maybe not for old guys, like, oh younger but older guys yeah, like you. Right. And it's TV fourteen, so I don't think it's for kids. I think they're trying to hit that, you know, with more of these more modern sensibilities, kind of this topical type themes, uh, casting reworks. I think they're going for more like a preteen, maybe early 20s type demographic. Right. Maybe this is trying to be someone, uh, well, we couldn't be related, a young kid's first introduction to Batman, but maybe some kind of preteen, early 20s. Right. More of a, it's more of a modern, it's an old version, but with more of a modern take and modern sensibilities kind of worked in. I think that's kind of what they're shooting for. Right. Whether they're hitting the mark for anybody, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I know for me, it doesn't feel like a show for me because, like, I would really want this to go like, you know, in my ideal world, it would be a very, it would be a darker, more atmospheric, more pulpy low tech but then like I, i'm okay with having some weird supernatural or sci-fi yeah, yeah. stuff and like kind of aping off of those old universal monster movies and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff and like the pulpy stuff of the 30s that's kind of in my head where i would go with it and it would be a lot darker than it is and like i guess i would see this as more like like you said more maybe for teens and you know uh preteens maybe something like that like i it's not uh, there's nothing overly violent about it. No. I don't. Rem- I don't remember seeing any blood or anything like no. that. There's a couple, there's a couple dams and hails and things. Some swear words or two. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think kids are going to enjoy this as much as like I don't. It's not. It's not bright and colorful. There's a lot of Batman in it. There's so not far. a lot of yeah. There's not a lot of <laughs> Batman in it. Mm-hmm. And then what you get to, they're just uninteresting kind of side human characters that are just. They're not like X Men. They're not like Spider Man and like you know his his amazing friends or his villains. Right. Like, yeah. 
I don't really see a kid really getting into this, and, except for like the five seconds they might see a Batman fight. Like, I don't really see this being narratively for kids, True. and I don't think it's content wise really for adults. So it's like yeah. a weird kind of place of being that I don't know. And like you have 10 episodes for it. So it feels like, and you're on Amazon. Like I don't, I mean, you know, I don't have kids, but may, so maybe people with kids are like, oh yeah, my kids are always just putting on Amazon. You know what I mean? Like yeah. instead of Disney Plus or like a Cartoon Network app or something, like yeah. are, are kids just really run into Amazon? <laughs> right. You know, like I mean, I mean, then they might be, but like, I don't know. I just don't feel like it's, you know, I just I don't I feel like it it's missed the mark for everybody. I feel like it just doesn't appeal much to Yeah. I don't feel like it appeals much to like fans like me who want a more darker and grittier and maybe a little bit more violence from it. And I don't think it's colorful or interesting enough or flashy enough to appeal to kids. I don't think it threads that needle like the animated series did. Yeah, where it was yeah. like strong stories that, that adults and kids could get into yeah. and an art style that could be uh, that could translate and be dark in places and then also a little bit poppy and pulpy and art deco-y and like kind of thread that needle. I don't think it threads that needle like that show did or true, some true. other animated series have done then and now really. Um, we've kind of talked about this. Like I just kind of put in, does, does this remind you of, because again, be people like have talked about that this reminds them of the Batman animated series. Does this remind you of the animated series or evoke any of those same emotions and your feelings you had when watching that show? Only because Bruce Tim is involved. Again, I mean, it's, it's, that's the only yeah. reason anybody <laughs> would say this is mm -hmm. because his name is attached to yeah. it. If his name wasn't attached to it, anybody that was with Batman TAS, nobody would be like, oh, this is the successor. This is the spiritual successor. Right, right. But it's just because Bruce Tim's name is on it. That's the only reason people are like, oh, this is... This is the this is the successor to Cody for anime too. And you can you can see his style. Yeah. But it's still it's different. It's more modernized, maybe mm -hmm. you know. We, we had mentioned cookie cutter, but it's more of a modern aesthetic to that old TAS style. Mm -hmm. It's not quite the same. Yeah, it's it's definitely a little bit tweaked. And um like I said, I think, you know, again, you think thirties and like maybe the goal is to like scale it back even but Bruce Tim's art style at its best is very um what's the word I'm looking for bare it's very like it's not there's not a lot of detail it's just you know it is what it is and it works and it, mm -hmm. it serves its purpose and it's great but it's not like we're not like seeing like in-depth detail and stuff like that it's just it's broad chest and capes and that's about yeah, it you're like, not counting abs or you know <laughs> yeah like everything is kind of broad yeah. and every kind of every it's, it's angular and those kind mm -hmm. of things and i mean it's great but it's like you know this show is like kind of a little bit of a a takeoff of that and like it just feels you know uh, which we'll kind of talk about in just a second i guess i can kind of lead into it now because like compare this and i know they're, they're two different worlds but compare this Ten episodes to I think it what was it eight episodes of X Men animated series we just got like compare these two like look at them together yeah because I've seen uh, especially the past couple of days a lot of people's like oh X Men ninety seven uh, you know Batman Cape Crusader two best animated things come out in a long time let's no. let's let's discuss no, let's compare not. them let's put them head to head I I'm a DC guy die hard way back and I put X-Men 97 head and shoulders above this. Yeah. Five episodes in. Yeah, absolutely. Above this right now. Like, X-Men 97, it's different. It was, it is a continuation. It is specifically <laughs> set up to continue. It picked right X, back up. Right, and yeah. it's it, it's set in the same style, but the, the art is updated and things like that. So it's not a completely fair comparison because that is definitely a love letter to a specific time, a specific right. show, specific cast of X-Men and characters. So it's not a complete one-to-one -one comparison, but like that fit show feels like it was crafted a, by people that had a love for that show and that material and those characters. It was a love letter to that show. This feels like it was made by people that like really to me 
like honestly like didn't understand the character or didn't really give a shit about the character like or didn't put enough effort into making this something special and now this show kind of bounced around a little bit i think originally it was going to be on max and, mm-hmm. and then like warner discovery like when they were doing their like hey we're going to cancel batgirl and like put it on the shelf and write it off taxes they were trying to like get rid of stuff and it got they got rid of it and mm-hmm. then amazon picked it up and it's like jj abrams and matt reeves maybe it's too many cooks in the kitchen i don't know what it is but like there's nothing memorable about the show and there's nothing to me that sits here and says like this was made with like love and care and like a deep understanding of the character and like wanting to do it right wanting to do something or to attempt to make something as good as they made in batman anime series i don't think this is like was made with the attempt of like making something as artful and impactful and like as meaningful as that, like even trying to do it. I don't think anybody even tried to do it. I think they were just like, hey, Batman, <laughs> uh, Penguin, give her a pussy. Um, <laughs> oh my God. And then, well, we're done. <laughs> and then, uh, let's bring this over. Yeah, make his face a little weird. Uh, who's Who can we get? Dietrich Bader, sure. He's, uh, he's Batman. <laughs> he's done Batman before. Bring him in. And, uh, like, that's what it feels like. Right. That's what it feels like. And it just feels like, how can we animate this for as cheap as possible? And, it, like, I don't know. It just, it, it really is disappointing to me. And I think that's why, like, why I'm talking so long and being on my soapbox about this is just because how disappointing it is because obviously I'm a huge Batman fan. I want Batman properties and media to be successful and like this may very well be successful and I may be in the minority. Yeah, it's already got a year two, right? Season two. Yes, I, I don't even I know. And I mean, we still yet. have five episodes to go and maybe I'll feel yeah. stronger about those other five, but like, this is just very disappointing to me. I never expected it to be Batman the Animated Series. I wanted it to be its own thing and do its own thing, but I wanted it to feel, um, uh, not feel, but I wanted it to be better to me than what it turned out to be here, Todd. Okay. I got you. Um, couple things before we wrap it up here, Todd. Uh, I want you to tell me if Batman Crepe Crusader is better than any of these Batman shows, okay? Okay. I think I put these in chronological order, but uh, Batman the Animated Series. No. Okay. <laughs> the new Batman Adventures. Uh, no. Batman Beyond? Uh, no. The Batman from 2004. Right, right now, no. Okay. Batman the Brave and the Bold? Uh, no. And lastly, Beware the Batman. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... And I, I kind of like Beware the Batman. Yeah, I would put it, I guess, um, above Beware and Brave and the Bold. I, it's not better than the animated series. It's not better than New Batman Adventures. It's not better than Batman Beyond. It's not better than The Batman. Now, obviously, Batman's been to other shows like Justice League, things like it's not better than Justice League. It's not better than Justice League Unlimited. Not better than any of that. I would put it above Beware the Batman, I guess, and Batman Brave and the Bold okay. by you know narrow margins, pretty much. Right. Bat, where the Batman? Did he even get finished? Did he even get a full season one? I think they did a full season one, but that was it. It kind of, I think it, best I remember, ended on like a cliffhanger in there. I think it was setting up Ray Shaw Ghoul, but then that was it. They uh, never they never came back. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, Todd, let's go to reviews. Uh, we'll we'll kind of, I'll get your episode by episode review scores here, Todd. So give us your review score for Batman Cape Crusader episode one. Uh, episode one, I, I thought was mediocre. <laughs> right. So it's what, a five? I think that was five a five. mediocre? Yeah. Okay. What about episode two? Uh, I thought episode two was decent. Uh, episode three and four were both good. Episode five, I thought was decent. So you're going five, you said two was decent, or two was what? Uh, I th- uh, one was mediocre, two was decent. I thought three and four were both good, and then I put five at a decent. Five at a decent. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I'm kind of, you know, I think for me, pretty much flat across the board, I'm going to give everything basically a five except episode four. I'm going to say episode one, two, three, and, f- and five were all five mediocre. And I'm going to say episode four, I'm going to say that was gets a six and a decent for me. Okay. I think it's pretty mediocre across the board, in my opinion. Um, like I said, I think maybe maybe there was behind-the-scenes stuff that that got to this show that kind of put it into what it, it's become. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that enjoy it, you know, but, you know, we do this to kind of – voice our opinion and for me to get to vent uh my opinion and thoughts on this and my i do not like this show five episodes in um maybe the other five will slightly turn me around but i think this is very mediocre average stuff and like 
it's nowhere near Batman the Animated Series. So if you're out there making those comparisons, just stop. Just, <laughs> just stop. Like you, you, right. don't, you really don't know what you're talking about. And I don't say that often because, like, I don't know what I'm talking about. But when it comes <laughs> to those two things, I know they're not in the same fucking universe. Okay. Right. Um, but yeah. So if you're looking for recommendations from me, unless you're already paying for Amazon, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't just just don't do it oh man yeah okay. i mean unless you're just like unless you're already paying for amazon uh, then go ahead because you're already paying the money but like if you're just wanting to get a month or get a free trial to amazon like don't don't bother go back and watch tas again and just enjoy yourself and right. like, leave this alone like okay. go watch some of the dc animated universe stuff watch under the red hood or batman year one or do something or yeah. dark knight returns and <laughs> do something good for yourself don't do this. Okay. Don't do this. Todd, any final thoughts from you about Cape Crusader? Okay. I might be digging my own grave here. Okay. But I'm going to play defense attorney. I'm going to play Harvey Dent All for right. this series All right. right now. That's fair. I mean, I'm going to try to defend it. That's fair because, like, I like I feel like I'm okay. I'm hard on it, but, like, I just – because I don't really care for it, but a lot of people do, so take it away, sir. So right out of the gate, this is no Batman the Animated Series. I think you and I both share the same feelings that Batman the Animated Series is the greatest animated series ever. But I think we may also agree that, that lo- it's a longer longer series. We've got a lot more episodes here to get through. Right. Uh, Batman Animated Series had some amazing episodes. Right. It had some great episodes. Right. It had some good episodes. Right. It had some decent episodes. And I think we'll admit there's a couple. The Underdwellers? Two, yeah, the Underdwellers. The, for, the Forgotten, which I yeah. was never a fan of. <laughs> Batman a, becomes Steve Martin. <laughs> there's a couple of three episodes that, you know, that you know, if I'm watching them in order, I may skip That over. was like three out of 63, <laughs> I know, I know. This is like four out of ten <laughs> so far. And trust me, I'm not shitting on Batman the Anime series. I, I, I love I Batman the Anime I mean, not every series. episode is yeah. like Heart of Ice yeah. or Perchance to Dream yeah. or something. I'm yeah, trying to go to the mat here and say, hey, yeah. you know, we got five more to go. Right. There's there's a season two, I think, has already been greenlit. But right out of the gate, I'm going to dis- I'm gonna go kind of in the middle of the road. I'm going to do a six, which is decent. I thought there were some good things here. I thought there were some, you know, pretty mediocre to bad things. I think there's some room for improvement. Uh, I'm gonna say I don't. This is not conceptually what I thought we were getting. You know, I, I was like you. I wanted that more 1930s, 1940s, pulpy. You know, mobsters, Tommy guns. You know, just smoke pellets. Yeah. The old big, you, you know, boxster uh, Batmobile with a big bad head on the front of it. You know, so something along that line. Right. And we may have time to maybe get some of those things. We'll see. But you know, right now I'm going to stick with the six. I think these first five were decent. We've got five more to go. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's fair. Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I say, I feel like I'm in the minority here. Like, I, I don't know, 61% audience score, but like, I mean, that's just on Rotten Tomatoes. But like, yeah, I just, I don't, you know, I just, the comparisons to TAS, they're going to, they're going to bug me. But like, yeah. Honestly, I am more interested in season two than I am season one for just the thought of like maybe season one got fucked around with yeah. and it didn't have a vision because of something, excuse me, because of like, are we going to get canceled? Is this going to get greenlit? Oh, we mm. were greenlit. Now we're not greenlit. Now we're at max. Now we're on Amazon. Maybe there was a lot of bullshit. Maybe right. they didn't know what to do. Maybe it was villain of the week and just like, well, let's put together the best show we can. So a season two, if they're just left alone to their own devices, may, that potentially is an idea that I could get behind. And maybe that gotcha. we'll see something turn around with the show. Um, I kind of wish they would go <clears throat> away. I don't lost my voice. <laughs> they were very passionate. Folks. Yeah, they would go away from the villain of the week stuff and do a little bit longer, long form, mm-hmm. do a couple, two tree potters, you right, know what I mean? Right, like, right. and do some like stories that kind of overarch and have some type of theme going through uh, the show. I wish they would have do a little bit more long form in season two, instead of getting this villain of the week stuff, which I mean, I know a lot of that too. Batman anime series was a lot of like this week it's Mr. Freeze and next week it's the Mad Hatter. Right. right. But I mean, like there was also a couple two parters and Robin Drecknin and you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, there like, were, there were, so do a little bit more long form stuff and like just pick a lane here. Is it for kids? Is it for adults? Because if it's for me, you need to like you need to give me some more violence and <laughs> some more like some more action and stuff. And if it's for kids, you need to make it like 
um, what what like cartoon show for a kid is set in the 1930s, Todd? Uh, none. It's I like, oh, here of. comes Dick Tracy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, sell that today. You know, some of the way the police officers looked in this, it reminded me of Dick Tracy, especially the way Flass and Bullock were right. dressed and Montoya. It looked like, they looked like Dick Tracy type guys. Yeah, like, what toys are you selling off of this? Penguin right. and their big cannon? You know what I mean? Whoa. Man. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, frigged up face Harvey Dent. Yeah. On the wrong side. Uh, anyway, we'll get to it. I've invented enough time. We're almost an hour into this thing. Uh, anything else before we get out of here? Think I'm good. So you're at what a six decent? I'm at a six decent on the first five. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say where I'm gonna say like a four overall. I'm gonna say four. I give each of them individually different ratings, but I'm gonna say I'm four subpar. Just very disappointing to me. We'll we'll come back next week. We'll watch the other five um, and kind of give you our thoughts on that. Yep. Uh, maybe we'll see if it, anything turns around for me. If not, I'm just gonna sit here the whole time and just like. Let you talk. <laughs> uh, will then, I still defend it? Yeah, exactly. Will Todd stay still? Tuned. Will Todd still defend the next <laughs> five next week? All right, I think we'll call it a wrap for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email. Get in touch with us on social media. Tile Capes will return. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye guys. See you guys.